so one thing that's sort of unique to orthodoxy, but it's made its ways outside is the Jesus prayer, what's also called the prayer of the heart. There's a number of great writings on the Jesus prayer, and I would really recommend to everybody to read The Way of the Pilgrim, and The Pilgrim Continues His Way, this one Russian story about this anonymous pilgrim um, who loses everything. Spoiler alert, yeah, I don't wanna give it all away, but the book's been out 100 years or whatever. To read that book and like to begin to call on the name of the Lord. Probably the most important part of it is not just repeating it a million times to start, but to pray with the heart not with the mind. This is a major thing about orthodoxy that's so wonderful. It's like you bypass the mind. Like you're not, most scriptural meditation, of course, you're using your mind. But when it comes to the prayer of the heart, you're, you're mostly not, you're mostly telling the mind to quit wandering around. Stop thinking about groceries or mowing the lawn or homework or what someone said to you and bypassing the brain to get to the heart so that the heart and to pray in the heart, the prayer of the heart, Jesus' prayer. Mostly people say it's Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. Often it'll be shortened or lengthened, so the longer is Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. A lot of people will hear it that way. People can shorten it even from the original, but anyway, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, have mercy on me, a sinner. Um, people were prayed a number of times, and again, without the mind wandering around. So that to just be not seeing anything, imagining anything, but to make our hearts still and our minds very still, so that there's just, like we can rest in the heart, rest in the prayer. This is a perfect thing to talk about with the spiritual father. What, what should I do and how often, what, how many times or how often or how long, you know, these are, these are the kind of things you'd ask a spiritual father about too. Um, but again, the way of the pilgrim, there's a number of other things written about the Jesus prayer. I would not recommend someone new to the church, um, a lay person or say someone even outside the church interested in orthodoxy, I would not recommend you know, getting the most advanced teachings on the Jesus prayer and trying to understand what's being taught and, and how things are written there. It's very easy, I think, without any real direction to just think I'm advanced. Everybody should think it's so great I'm not advanced and to start where they are and to pray the prayer and to follow the Lord. Um, I always have people in my parish who ask to include the Jesus prayer in a rule of prayer. Um, usually it's a hundred Jesus prayers. This doesn't take very little effect. It takes no time at all. And um, to pray in Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, and pray out, have mercy on me, or have mercy on me, a sinner. And uh, to not see anything or worry about anything and just to pray the prayers. Um, light a candle, do some prostration, the Jesus prayer, and then doing morning prayers or some version of that, and then scripture, of course. And, good reading, all kinds of things. But I mean, I, I think everybody should pray the prayer, you know, and should try. And um, you know, we have so many prayers we're praying and it's very easy to fall into, give me what I want. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, give me what I want. That's, that's like a lot of the way we pray. Um, and to pray, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. And, we, and even to expand it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on my friend. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on my child. You know, and naming names, you know. Um, so the Jesus prayer can be used for that, but it's not telling the Lord what to do about it. It's just saying, do the thing, as Father Tom Hofka would say, used to say, do the thing you wanna do, because the Lord is merciful. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy is like saying, Lord, do the thing you want to do. So we don't say, give me the money or fix the problem. Um, there's probably nothing wrong with praying from the heart, honestly, everything, like fix the problem. But we don't want to make our whole prayer life like ordering from a short order cook, you know, like a butler. Do this for me, do that for me. So the Jesus prayer really, it's like counterintuitive in a way. It's like, and it, go, and it goes against like maybe what we've, 
like our impulse is, which is God is there to serve me. <laughs> now it becomes Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. So tried and true, prayed for hundreds and hundreds. And I mean, we even see it in the scripture, you know, like in a way like the uh, publican and the Pharisee, the parable that Jesus told about the, the righteous and the unrighteous that a man comes into the temple and he is a tax collector and a sinner and he won't look up. He stands in the back and he's beating his chest and he's saying like, you know, he's saying, have mercy on me. He's basically praying the Jesus prayer and you know, Jesus teaching it. Um, have mercy on me. The Pharisee comes up to the front of the church. I thank you, God. I'm not like other men, especially that guy. You know, I give a tithe on everything I have. And, you know, he's basically, and in the punchline in that parable, Jesus says that he prayed to himself, that the Pharisee was just praying to himself. He wasn't even praying to God. And the guy in the back who couldn't look up, he leaves he leaves righteous. He leaves like with the Lord. The icon of this parable is fantastic. It shows like a, like a church. It's like takes place outside, it looks like, but it's, it shows a church. And they go in and it's the Pharisee who's up high and the publican, the tax collector's down low. And on the other side of the church, they've, they've changed spots so that the, the righteous looking one has been humbled because he's not actually righteous. He was praying to himself. And the one who couldn't even look up to God because of his sins is made righteous because he's calling on the name of the Lord. So the Jesus prayer, all of that to say, <laughs> if we're still talking about the Jesus prayer, the Jesus prayer, it's, it's, it, we humble ourselves before the Lord. Have mercy on me. Not like, I deserve your attention. Give me what I want, you know. And um, that's the best place to be. And so to pray the Jesus prayer without any distractions, and maybe we can't go for very long, but to pray without any worries, without worldly cares, without thinking, you know, the oil change is overdue, whatever it is, to just put it all aside for just a few minutes and just to pray peacefully, whether even out loud or just with the mind and the heart, we say. You know, we're not using the brain so much as the mind, what the, what the Lord has given us to interact, like to seek him in the heart, not just working out like an equation of prayer, but actually just praying. It's, it's great. It's a, it's a treasure. It's the Jesus, Jesus prayer is a treasure too because of, because of who we're calling on, not because of some like system, but just because it does put us in the right position, which is we're sinners and puts the Lord in the right position, which is he's the one who, who wants to have mercy. It's the best. Like, it's the best. So you often see Orthodox running around with the like prayer ropes on his bracelets and, and uh, in their pockets and hanging from the rear view mirrors. It's great. I'm all for it. More the merrier. Like, yeah, it's the best. So uh, someone today, we had liturgy this morning and uh, someone who's newly baptized um, from November, she gave me a prayer rope saying, will you bless this prayer rope? You know, I wanted to say, if you're praying with it, it is blessed, but I didn't say that. Um, I put it on the altar during liturgy. It was so sweet to give it back to her at the end of liturgy. I'm like, this was sitting on the altar. <laughs> like, this is awesome. Like, enjoy this, you know, but pray it. Like the only, I mean, it's not, it's not magic. So it's like, it only works if you're praying that, you know, so it's just knots, you know, it's not like a rosary where you like use your imagination to go through like the life of Christ. It's just knots to help you, really to help you concentrate. You're like, oh yeah, I'm praying the prayer. I'm going through, you know, you're just moving through knots. And, um, and also, if someone said, well, I'm going to do 100 or do 300 or whatever it is, you have a way to kind of go. You don't go, you know, 145, 146, you know. You just can pray the prayer, and you're like, oh, I'm back around to the beginning. That was, a, it was 100, you know, I'm, I'm done now or whatever. So, And people can pray it formally. People can pray, play, pray it informally. You know, you can pray it during your prayer time. You can pray it while you're driving on the airplane, waiting in a line, you know. Whatever it is. I mean, you don't need the rope to pray it. The rope just becomes like a little, like, access. People actually, if they pray with the rope all the time, they pick it up, they start praying. It's a funny thing. So we're kind of made that way.